Hello everyone. Greetings from Press Zero. Continuing our discussions on Rayleigh Ritz method. Right now we'll see how a cantilever beam is subjected to a point load at its free end. The deflection, what is its form? We try to derive an equation for the deflection at the free end using the Rayleigh Ritz method. As usual, the very st first step is to formulate the potential energy functional. So, potential energy functional, potential energy functional. It is given by pi equals strain energy plus work potential. But we know that for beams, strain energy is given by Ei over 2 integral or the entire length 0 to L dou square u by dou x square whole square into dx and work potential is given by since it is a point load minus p and it is calling causing a displacement of y max so y max is the displacement so we have the strain energy we have the work potential substituting both strain energy and work potential into the potential energy functional we obtain pi equals ei over 2 0 to l dou square u by dou x square whole square into dx minus p into y maximum let me call this as equation 1. So, we have the potential energy functional formulated. The next step would be to assume a displacement function that satisfies our boundary conditions. Now, when we say boundary conditions, unlike a simply supported beam, for a cantilever beam, the boundary conditions are a little different. At x equals 0, that is on the fixed end, displacement is 0. And also at the fixed end, the slope, that is the differential of displacement to the first differential of displacement is also equal to 0 at the fixed end. So we try to assume the trigonometric function again as we discussed, though you can assume a polynomial or approximation. But a word of caution if you are using a polynomial displacement function, it is better that you take up the third degree polynomial or higher for better results. So, we will assume the trigonometric displacement function. Let the approximate displacement function b approximate displacement function b put it as u equals a into 1 minus cos by x by 2l or 2 times L. So, let me call this as equation 2. Now, applying the boundary conditions, let us check if it is satisfied. Applying boundary conditions, what are the boundary conditions? As I said, at x equals 0, u equals 0. Does this get satisfied? 
when I substitute x equals 0, it becomes cos 0, it is 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0. So, u becomes equal to 0. So, it is satisfied. And the other boundary condition is at x equals 0, dou u by dou x is equal to 0. So, if I do uh, differentiate u with respect to x, so it will be plus sin pi x by 2l into pi by 2 times l. Now, when I substitute x equals 0, sin 0 will become 0. Hence, dou u by dou x will also be 0. So, the assumed displacement function, so the assumed displacement function, assumed displacement function satisfies, satisfies the boundary conditions. Satisfies the boundary conditions. Now, maximum displacement occurs at the free end of the beam. Maximum displacement occurs at the end of beam occurs at the end of beam so that is at x equals l u is y maximum therefore equation 2 becomes if you substitute x equals L will be left with cos pi by 2 is 0, so a into 1 is a. y max equals a. Let me call this as equation 3. Okay. Now y max is ready to be substituted into equation 1. We need dou square u by dou x square. So differentiating differentiating equation 2 twice so when I differentiate it twice the very first differential is dou u by dou x and it is equal to a sine a sine as I told you before pi x by 2L, 2 into L multiplied by the remaining term pi into pi divided by 2 into L. So, if I take up the second differential, it will be dou square u by dou x square will be equal to A cos pi x over 2 into L multiplied by pi by over 2 into L whole square. This is the second order differential. Let me call this as equation 4. Now I need to substitute y max dou square u by dou x square into equation. Okay. So when I do substitute the terms, I will obtain or if I do write it substituting substituting values from equation three and four equation three and in equation 1, be left with pi equals 
ई आई ओवर टू जीरो टूल्व ई कॉस फाइव एक्स ओवर टूवेल्व टू इन टूल्व फाइव ओवर टू इन टूल्व होल स्क्वायर द एंटायर थिंग स्क्वायर डी एक्स माइनस पी इन टू ए Now I need to simplify this further. So this will be e i over two. I'll take a square outside the integral since it is a constant. Pi over two l two into l to the power of four. Integral zero to l cos square. By x over two into l dx minus p into a. So if you remember the trigonometric relations, cos square theta can be written as one plus cos two theta divided by two. I'll put up the equation somewhere up in the video. You can look into it. So when I use the same formulation, this will be e i over two a square pi over two l two into l to the power of four integral zero to l half multiplied by one plus cos pi x over l. Into dx minus p into a. So this will be e i over two a square. You can make this as e i over four if I take the half outside the integral. Pi over two l two into l to the power of four. Integrating the terms that are inside, I'll obtain x. Plus sine pi x over l divided by pi over l limits from zero to l minus p into a. Now substituting the limits, we are left with e i over four a square pi over Two L two into L to the power four. Uh, substituting the upper limit, it will be L plus sine pi, which is zero. So it will be L minus uh, substituting the lower limit zero. The entire term becomes zero minus P A. This is our potential energy functional. What is the next step that we need to Look into. We need to minimize this potential energy functional. Minimizing the potential energy functional when I do want to minimize this. What is the term that I have? Do pi by variable is do a should be equal to zero. So do pi by do a is nothing but it becomes two into a e i over four pi by two into l to the power of four minus l minus p a p. Integrating uh, differentiating p a is we will have it only. P, which is equal to zero. So this becomes a e i by four pi to the power of four divided by two to the power of four is sixteen. Sorry, this is e i by two sixteen l to the power four multiplied by l is equals to. So L L gets cancelled, so 
I will be left with a as equal to 16 into 2 it is 32 p l cube and that thing divided by pi to the power of 4 e into i so this is the value of a so maximum deflection maximum deflection is given by y max and it is equal to a so y max is nothing but 32 pl to the power of 3 pi to the power of 4 ei which is if you simplify pi to the power of 4 divided by 32 it will be pl cube by 3.044 e into i which is the solution that is required so thank you for watching you can try the solution using polynomial approximating the displacement function as well but try to keep the order of the polynomial as minimum keep it to third degree and try the solution but as i said in the previous sessions the for the beams Trigonometric approximations gives better result, hence I went with trigonometric approximations. In the next session, we will look into a cantilever beam subjected to uniformly distributed load. Until then, take care. Thank you.